Um, Sid Lerner is going to talk about a little idea he's had that has had a global impact. Please welcome him. Wendell Burry, is that a tough act to follow? <laughs> Jeez, thanks a lot. I, I must say, speaking for the Monday campaigns and the wonderful kids who work on it and Peggy New, our intrepid president, uh, it's really an honor to be invited to this big guy party. Really, it's terrific. Uh, I'm going to try and get around in five minutes to tell you what we've been doing for the last nine years, which started at Bob Lawrence's Center for a Livable Future at Johns Hopkins when uh, everybody was talking about fat and cholesterol before obesity and diabetes got in that top line. And we were discussing you know, all the known factors, people eating too much meat, too much fat, and how do we get it out of the diet. So the problem was known what to do. As I asked Bob, what is too much? And he said the USDA, the FDA, the powers that be said 15%. Thank God for that, because it was 18% or 12%. We wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be. Because 15% worked out to three meals out of 21. So you don't have to look at every plate and say how to get 15% off. Just say three meals one day, don't eat meat. So it put into a nice, tidy behavior package something that was doable, understandable. Two words said it all. And uh, fortunately, media was changing and social media was just coming on. We got to be in times and places in media that no budget could really pay for in paid media. So the campaign started off a little slowly, Meatless Monday, and uh, that one day a week, that reasonable, plausible ask to be a major preventive influence in the biggest killers in the country. We used to die of genes and germs, but uh, we're doing self-inflicted wounds now with overeating, overdrinking, smoking, and these are self-inflicted wounds that will kill 67% of us over the next years. So if we could prevent those, we'd save a lot of lives, a lot of pain, and a lot of money in a very shrinking available funds world. So over the nine years, how's it worked? Well, top line, there's some surveys took late, late, taken lately that said in the last 10 years, meat consumption is down about 12%, attributed to the high cost of meat, and more flexitarians coming online, obesity and other ter terrible figures rising became more and more evident. And some of the papers have also said campaigns like the Monday, Meatless Monday had something to do with it. Uh, this is the third year of the Baltimore school system. 83,000 kids enjoy Meatless Mondays there. Oakland, California, other school systems are into There's a dozen charter schools in the New York area who are looking at Meatless Monday now. <clears throat> so it's going through the schools. Tony Jurassi did a beautiful job in Baltimore. And it's not something that other schools can't pick up. It's an incremental change. And thank goodness for this new innovation of salad bars in New York schools. You already got a fixed thing there qualifies to be a meatless Monday dish. Just put a sign on it, says it, and maybe make it half price on Monday. In other words, getting into the mind before you get into the body. And what we're beginning to do is include the public into participating in what we ought to be doing. Yes, you can make more sidewalks and roads so people can walk and bike, but ultimately some individual's got to be talked into getting this bike or getting the shoes on, taking a walk. We have to start basically, you know, trust the public to participate in the major health problems we're going into right now. You can't legislate everything, although we do need a lot of legislation that helps. When cars came out to replace the horses, we got used to red lights and speed limits, now seat belts. And in liquor laws, we have liquor licensing. These major inputs in people's lives have taken on the inroads of losses of little freedoms for the greater good. Food is at that critical time in the history of man that has ha happened yet. The biggest problem is getting to eat, at converting with the problem we now have people having too much to eat. So we've got to get used to the idea that there could be some little liberties having to be given up here and there, but hopefully most can be done through behavior. So what we've done in the nine years of Meatless Monday, so Dexo does it in 6,000 feeding places, and in their first year it showed that they are now in those schools and cafeterias and hospitals that they service. Meat sales are down, vegetable sales are up. The numbers are on our website. Now, this is true and everybody has been using it. We did a survey ourselves that said 
At this point, after nine years, there's about a 43% awareness in the country of the campaign. Within that 43%, some 36% said it has affected how frequently they have meat on the table or in their meals when they order. So there is effectiveness taking place. You can talk to the public in a reasonable marketing-oriented way that we haven't been doing up until now. There's a sanctimonious, frankly, among uh, our do-gooder public uh, who think that we don't have to do the tawdry thing they do to sell hot dogs and colas. No, you do. We have to start reducing the messaging we have, the information that's out there, the research that's out there, putting into the best utilization of contemporary media that the people who sell the soft drinks, the fat foods, the cigarettes, the liquor. Who, no, we've got to use the available marketing techniques. I think public health schools, health organizations ought to have a marketing department. Whoever makes something, produces something, or tries to sell something that doesn't have a sales force that gets it the hell out of the warehouse. And here we've got burgeoning quantities of information regimens, and we just don't really get it out. We're sort of, uh, I don't know, by tradition or by DNA. I think we really, we have a new thing up at Syracuse. My alma mater is the Learner Center for Public Health promotion. We're trying to make this an idea that before you do a research study, what are you going to do with it when you get it? Or wh why do you need it? What are we going to do to sell these other concepts? So this is really a call to take the idea of Meatless Monday. We now have Healthy Monday, which has uh, tips on hundreds of thousands of student lines. Every Monday is a Healthy Monday tip. We're working with the Cancer Society now to use Monday as a quit date. They say quit on your birthday or New Year's, and 20 days, 40 days later, you're smoking again. We're saying quit on a Monday and stay quit Monday. If you fall off the wagon, get back on another Monday. This week, uh, National Cancer Institute is doing the Monday Challenge. We're talking to American Cancer Society right now to do it for the coming uh, American, Great American Smoke Out. We have another thing. There's 67 million Americans who are caregivers taking care of an autistic child a disabled spouse, a senile parent, and if they don't take time to care for themselves, they're not going to take care for anybody. So we're having Caregivers Monday. Every Monday, take me time. And Sherry Snelling, who's head of, uh, who's just started the Ch Ch Caregivers Club, is taking up the me time Monday, big time. So this is, again, you the idea of Monday, a weekly behavioral thing that it's man-made. All other times are nature. Man, the week is man's grasping life into his own hands. Doesn't need the seasonality or, or astral phenomenon. Every seven days, there's a Monday. And it's, uh, we're trying to get to the point where Friday's payday, Saturday's play day, Sunday's pray day. We'll make Monday the day all health breaks loose. <laughs>